For the first time ever, you can now get the Honda City as a hatchback. Technically, this has no predecessor, but it still has big shoes to fill because this replaces the Honda Jazz. Now let's see how it stacks up. You might be wondering why this car even exists. In this country, the Honda Jazz has been around for three generations. So why leave now? Well, it really boils down to cost. The Honda City sedan is sourced from Thailand. And since the Honda City and the Honda Jazz don't share a lot of the same parts, it'll cost significantly more to bring the Jazz over here. So instead of the Honda Jazz, we get this. Now that may be good or bad news, but let's just say that not everyone's a fan of the way the fourth generation Honda Jazz looks. At least this is less polarizing. In any case, let's take a closer look to see if it's a worthy replacement to the Honda Jazz. Now, 80% of this car is identical to the Honda City RS sedan. And personally, I don't think that's a bad thing because as far as I'm concerned, the Honda City is the best looking subcompact sedan in the market today. It's also one of the best equipped. For instance, you get LED headlights and fog lamps, which really isn't common in this segment. And this being an RS means no chrome, which is very nice. Along the side, you'll see that three-fourths of this car is identical to its sedan sibling, which means you get power folding side mirrors in gloss black and you even get the same wheel design. Although this is Berlina black as opposed to the sedan's two-tone finish. These alloys are wrapped in 185 55-series R16 tires. But aside from that, you'll see that the character lines and the rear doors are also identical to the sedan. In fact, the only real difference is right here at the back. So obviously, you get a hatch instead of a trunk. And while it does look like a bit of an afterthought because these lines here could be more parallel, it really doesn't look that bad. You'll see that you still get horizontal LED taillights and a rear diffuser to maintain that sporty touch. This is 204 millimeters shorter than the sedan, so naturally, Trunk space is a little smaller at 289 liters compared to the sedan's massive 519 liters. But that doesn't mean that cargo space is totally compromised because folding these rear seats gives you 841 liters. These are also ULTRs, which means it can be configured for utility, long objects, tall objects, and also if you just need to refresh. That's a lot of versatility for a subcompact sedan if you ask me. Now let's go check out the rest of the interior. This feels just like the sedan, which is definitely not a bad thing because this is one of the best equipped subcompact cars in the market. But aside from the tech and features, this also excels when it comes to space, comfort, ergonomics, and overall build quality. It really doesn't feel cramped like most subcompact cars, and these leather seats with these suede inserts are really comfortable. Everything is well within reach and logically placed, so you never have to fumble for any of the controls. There aren't any knobs for the audio system, but at least there are physical buttons. They're also positioned closer to the passenger side because the driver already gets audio controls on the steering wheel. The steering wheel is also wrapped in really nice leather, and you can adjust it for tilt and reach to make finding your ideal driving position an effortless affair. Then we move on to the instrument cluster, which has analog gauges and a multi-info screen in the middle, which displays trip info, fuel consumption, range, and temperature. The infotainment system is an 8-inch touchscreen which comes standard with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Also get a total of 8 speakers including tweeters on each door, which is more than what you typically get in this class. This also comes with a reverse camera which allows you to view various angles when backing up. The climate controls are fully automatic and I'm glad that they now use these physical knobs as opposed to the touchpad system found in the previous generation city. This is just more intuitive. Also rare for this segment are air vents for the rear passengers, who will also be treated to more space than what you would typically see in a subcompact. Compared to the sedan, the hatch actually gets a bit more headroom thanks to the roof line which is 21 millimeters higher. It's also nice to see a center armrest with cup holders and a flat floor which the middle passenger will definitely appreciate. Overall, there just really isn't anything more you should expect from a subcompact car. This just ticks all the boxes when it comes to space, comfort, practicality, and features, making this the best cabin in its class. 
Now let's see if we can say the same about the way it drives. Now I've already driven the Honda City sedan, so I'm pretty sure that this will be very impressive. Compared to the sedan, this is a little bit shorter, but the wheelbase is the same length, so the turning radius remains unchanged. Surprisingly, this is 21 kilograms lighter than the sedan, but you don't feel the additional weight. This is still very responsive and light on its feet. Under the hood, you get a naturally aspirated 1.5 liter engine that pumps out 119 horsepower and 145 newton meters of torque. And for this segment, those are pretty decent numbers. This comes with a continuously variable transmission which feels vastly superior compared to the one in the previous generation city. Now, I'm not sure if you can attribute that to the fact that peak torque comes in a tad bit earlier because this has a double overhead cam engine, or if it's just the transmission tuning, but it definitely feels more motivated. It also has paddle shifters, and that can be fun, but it just doesn't do it for me because it emulates gear shifts. So it's like asking someone out on a date and then just meeting them online. It really isn't the same. The steering is also very light and extremely responsive, so it makes the car feel even more nimble. And it also makes it extremely easy to park and maneuver in tight spaces. So the question is, is this the best driving subcompact car in the market? Well, it comes pretty close, but I can't give it that title only because it has a CVT and I personally prefer conventional automatics or manual transmissions but I'm really not willing to argue with anyone who thinks it is. The ride is also very good. It is extremely comfortable. And despite this having a torsion beam suspension, which is common for cars in this segment, the suspension is extremely compliant and it keeps the car well planted around corners. So it's still confidence inspiring if you wanted to drive this a little aggressively. Now, despite this car having an RS badge, don't expect it to be sporty because RS does not stand for anything exciting like Rally Spec or Rally Sport. It stands for road sailing. And it's meant to connote a feeling of calmness and smoothness like you're sailing out on the road. And that's exactly what this car delivers. So as a daily driver and even something with a bit of pep, this is a joy to drive. The Honda City hatchback sells for 1,115,000 pesos. And considering the fact that the Honda Jazz would have cost more to bring here, just imagine what the price tag on that would have been. Now, I know a lot of people will miss the Honda Jazz, but considering everything you get with this, this really isn't a compromise. In fact, I think that the Honda City, be it a sedan or a hatchback, is the best subcompact car you can currently buy. For a subcompact car, there just really isn't anything more you could want. Oh, I know, a manual transmission on the RS variant. Now, that's a good idea. Let me know in the comment section if you think that would be nice. Thanks for watching.